Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we're going to be taking a second look at a company that we've actually talked about on the channel before. The company name is Score Media and Gaming. They're involved in the sports space, esports, and getting into the sports betting realm, which is really exciting. Now I've been meaning to do an update on this company for a while, and it was actually a subscriber who reached out a couple of days ago that prompted me to get this video out. So thanks very much and shout outs for the reminder. Now before we get into it, you guys, please take a second to smash that like button. I promise you it's 100% free to do, and it really helps me and the channel out in a big way. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, please feel free to do so. And leave a comment in the section below on what you think of this company, their Q2 results, and if you're currently holding any shares. Now without further ado, let's play the intro clip and get into today's video. Okay guys, we have a banger of a video for you today. Really excited to talk about Score Media and Gaming. This is a company we've talked about on the channel before. I actually talked about this prior to their big 10 to 1 split. And this is a company that I've been following personally for years and years before they even started thinking about the gaming or sports betting industry. And they were simply just a score or sports app itself. So this one hits close to home, you guys. I wanted to give this stock some love because it's really pulled back substantially since that 10 to 1 reverse split. And I've had a number of subscribers talking to me about Score Media and Gaming and asking for an update. So I thought I'd go through their numbers, their Q2 presentation, my bull and bear case for the stock, and what I think of Score Media and Gaming moving forward. So before we get into it, I wanted to pull up their chart here. So this is a six month view, but if you look back to November of 2020, they were in that $5 range and they actually made their way all the way up to nearly $42 in mid-February there. So February 12th, they hit an all-time high of 42. And since then, it's been pretty grim for this company. It's pulled back all the way to where it closed here on Wednesday, May 19th at just under $14. Now keep in mind, this is US dollars. They did uplist to the NASDAQ, and that was part of the reason they had to do that reverse split. So this is in U.S. funds. However, they've pulled back substantially, and they're trading for a fraction of what they were just a couple of months ago. Now, in terms of market cap, they're sitting at $695 million U.S., so they're now under that billion-dollar market cap, a former unicorn which has fallen from grace. Now, that being said, this may be a good opportunity to enter this stock. I was thinking about taking a position prior to the split, and I've been watching it continually since then, and it's getting cheaper and cheaper on a daily basis, which makes it more and more attractive for me as a potential investor in SCORE. Now before we get into the deep dive on SCORE Media and Gaming itself, I wanted to bring up another giant in this sports betting or mobile betting field, which is of course DraftKings. So this company has also seen a very similar pullback. They were trading up over the $70 US price point back in the middle of March, and they've actually pulled back now under $45 a share. DraftKings is obviously a much bigger company. They have a market cap of about $17.5 billion. But the reason I wanted to pull this up, you guys, is just to show that there's been some weakness in this sector across the board. And it's not just Score Media and Gaming that's seen this pullback. It's actually a number of these sports betting related companies across the industry. So that brings us to our next question and the title of this video. Is it time to buy the dip and is it time to make a move into SCORE Media and Gaming? So this article from The Motley Fool talks about the SCORE's rapid share price appreciation and then sudden drop off and it goes through a lot of the same topics that we're going to talk about in this video. Now there's three things I wanted to point out quickly in this article. Number one is Bill C-218 which is a Canadian bill which is going to look to approve single game sports betting here in Canada. So that's going to be massive for SCORE Media. Score has a lot more traction north of the border here. This is the premier sports app in Canada. And once this bill, or I should say if and when this bill does go through, Score is going to be very well positioned to take advantage of this market virtually immediately. Now secondly is the US expansion. So analysts are projecting a 70% plus increase in the company's sales and top line revenue growth in the neighborhood of about 79%. So SCORE has seen tremendous growth in the United States. We're going to talk about that in their Q2 results. 
but it's important to mention that they're really looking to expand in both countries simultaneously. Now in terms of valuation on the score, this was one of the red flags that I called out in my previous video. So if you haven't checked that video out, I would highly encourage you to do so. But at that point in time, I said I wasn't ready to pull the trigger because I felt like Score had really gotten ahead of itself in terms of its share price. Now this article came out about five days ago, so the numbers may vary slightly, but Score is currently trading at a price to sales multiple of about 44 with a price to book value ratio of 16. So it's definitely richly valued, you guys. It's trading at a premium to a lot of other companies in this sector. And if you look at other sectors, such as the MJ industry, which is also undergoing extreme growth right now, some of the companies I talk about in those other videos are trading at two, three, four times sales. So SCORE could definitely be seen as overvalued at this point in time based on their current revenue profile and their current sales. Now that doesn't mean I'm saying don't buy the SCORE. It's just one thing to be aware of as you're comparing this company to other potential investments that you could park your money in. So we're gonna jump over to the SCORE's website now. I wanted to walk you through their various platforms before we get into their actual Q2 investor presentation. So they really operate in three segments here, you guys. The top one is the one that we're gonna be focusing on in this video, so the SCORE bet. And this is now available in Colorado, Indiana, Iowa, and New Jersey. So they have opened up in certain states, but they still have very small market penetration if you look at the United States overall. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity for growth south of the border along with here in Canada. So that's the platform that we're really going to be focusing on in this video. But worth mentioning you guys is their traditional The Score Sports app. And we're actually going to look at the reviews of that app in a second here. This is a very popular platform that a lot of people here in Canada and in the US go to for their scores, sports news, team updates, whatever the case is. I've been an avid user of the score app myself for years and years. And then third and finally is their esports division. Now this sector I'm extremely bullish on as well, you guys. I think there's a ton of growth ahead of the esports industry. And the score has a very strong following on their YouTube page. They're starting to set up score branded standalone eSport events. And I'm very encouraged with the growth and the traction that the score is showing in this division. So if we jump over to the Apple App Store, you can see here the scores app. Now they're ranked number 26 in sports overall for the category. They have an average user rating of 4.8 out of 5 stars with over 464,000 individual ratings. So extremely popular app and very highly marked in terms of its user engagement and user overall experience. So that's very important here, you guys. I think as they move into the betting space, people are really gonna stick with what they know and customers who already have the score installed on their phone, they're used to checking it for scores, their sports news, that's naturally gonna be the platform that they use for betting if and when it becomes available. Now I did wanna mention here, you guys, there is definitely competition in this space. So in North America overall, the score is actually rated number three behind ESPN and Yahoo Sports. In Canada here, of course, it is the number one platform. After that would be TSN, Sportsnet, and then ESPN. So you can see the top three really don't change between North America and Canada. It's just really the order in which customers use or rank their platform. Now you can see on the right here, some of their social media metrics with over 1.7 million YouTube subscribers and 1.2 million TikTok followers. So those are impressive numbers, you guys. I wish I could get my channel up, up to 1.7 million subs one day, but very impressive. And we're gonna look at this in a little bit more detail as we jump into this presentation. So moving along here, guys, now we're gonna jump into their investor presentation from Q2 of 2021. Now this came out just recently here last month, so we've got some really good numbers to go through. And Q2 was honestly a pretty strong quarter for this company. Now keep in mind, they're still in growth mode, so some of these numbers may not really be draw dropping at this point, but the year over year and the quarter over quarter growth is really what should catch your eye. They set a second quarter record for media revenue, which came in at $8 million and represented a 17% year over year increase. Now keep in mind, this is pandemic situation. So sports and particularly live sports are still not back to pre-pandemic levels. Their handle on the score bet platform grew to a record $81.6 million, which was a 491% increase year over year. So that's phenomenal, you guys. 500% growth is nearly unheard of in any industry. And if you're wondering what the handle is, that's actually the amount of money 
that's bet or goes through the sports bet platform. So that's not revenue or profit, that's just the amount of money that's wagered on games during the quarter. Now I should mention these are in Canadian dollars, so keep that in mind, 81.6 million Canadian. And the final point I wanted to mention on here is they successfully executed their US IPO, so that was the NASDAQ uplist, and raised gross proceeds this is in US dollars of 186.3 million. So a huge event obviously for the company. However, they've seen some of that excitement trail off here as the share price has dropped since that initial IPO. So this slide talks a little bit more about the score bet, their gaming revenue specifically. So New Jersey gaming handle rose about 200% versus the prior year. Their total gaming handle quarter over quarter in F21 was up 46%. So you can see that sports betting is really starting to come back as more and more people are attending these events in person. They launched the score bet in Iowa. So as we saw, they're now active in four US states. So just a fraction of the total market and they're already seeing these huge percentage increases. And they signed two really notable agreements. Number one was with Caesars Entertainment for mobile sports betting in Illinois, the sixth most populous state in the US. And they also became the official betting operator for the PGA Tour in Canada and the United States. But just keep in mind on the Canadian side of things, it's still pending legislation or legalization. But I think that's a very big and strategic announcement for this company. Golf has become super popular over the last five years and a lot of people who watch and are interested in golf tend to have a fair amount of money and they like to bet on their favorite players. So I think this is going to be a huge catalyst for the score moving forward. Now shifting our focus to Canada here, we talked briefly about this C218 bill. This is actually going to give Canadians the right or the legal ability to bet on single sports events. Now this overwhelmingly passed in its second reading in the House of Commons in February and it's got support from different parties here in Canada. So cross-party support, which is very important to get these things pushed through Parliament. Now one thing worth noting here, the SCORE has been very actively involved in this process. On March 23rd, the CEO of SCORE, John Levy, actually appeared in front of the House of Commons, and the SCORE was the only sports betting operator in Canada to submit a brief and actually appear before the House. So this really gives them credibility and notoriety among the decision makers here in the Canadian government. Now they're expecting Ontario to actually be the first province to push this through, which is great because Ontario also has the biggest population here in Canada, which means the biggest revenue opportunity. Now that being said, the score estimates the total Canadian online sports betting industry to represent about four to five billion dollars US at its maturity. So a massive opportunity here for the score. And as mentioned, this is the go-to platform here in Canada. So I think they're gonna be able to hit the ground running. So now we're gonna shift our focus and look at the actual sports betting platform itself or app. So obviously Super Bowl is the biggest sporting event in all of North America here. So that drove significant growth for the score bet platform, registering the highest ever number of first time bettors with approximately 275% growth year over year. And gaming handle for that individual event grew by over 500% versus 2020. The March Madness basketball tournament is another massive event for sports here in North America. And the score was able to generate their best ever week in terms of overall cash bets during the tournament's first week of operation. Now as more and more people are turning to this app, for sports news itself and for betting availability. That obviously drives the media and advertising division of SCORE as well. So they signed some huge deals in Q2 here with various advertisers, including Rocket Mortgage, Pepsi, McDonald's, BMW, Fox Sports, NASCAR, and NBA Canada. So very well-established companies that are now turning to the SCORE platform to advertise their products on. In terms of usage, Single user sessions were up 8% year over year to 488 million app openings in Q2. They averaged 3.9 million monthly active users with each user checking their app an average of 125 times a month. So that's insane, you guys. People are going on this three, four, five times a day to check scores and events. So extremely sticky and loyal customers here. Some more stats about the Super Bowl engagement. So 2.2 million users visited the scores NFL section and spent an average of just under 11 minutes in the app with user sessions for the Super Bowl specifically up about 15% year over year. And the final point on here is they actually redesigned and rebuilt the entire app 
for the Android platform to make that a better user experience. Now a quick point on the eSports division. As mentioned, we're not focusing a lot on this segment in this particular video, but I did want to call out that they actually aired their first live event for League of Legends. They generated 4.6 million impressions across all of their social platforms. And as we saw there between Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, their monthly reach was approximately 88 million people. So SCORE continues to be one of the top ranked sports media outlets and they're really executing on a high level in the esports division as well. Now in terms of the actual financial results for Q2, it was definitely a mixed bag here. So you can see total revenue actually dropped by a million dollars compared to Q2 in 2020. While media revenue came in at a record of $8 million, this was actually offset by negative net gaming revenue. So they're spending a lot of money in the form of promotions and incentives to get people on this platform and making bets. Operating expenses increased to $20 million for the three month period. They're citing expansion of the score bet in the US and US related listing expenses as really driving these costs. And they reported an EBITDA loss of 12.9 million versus 8.6 million loss in Q2 of 2020, which again were driven by the expenses related to US expansion and US uplisting. Now the glass half full side of things here, or the bull case, was gaming handle was up considerably to north of $81 million, which we just saw at the start of this presentation which represents nearly 500% year over year increase. So that's phenomenal. And that's really where SCORE sees their future. So that's great to see. Gross gaming revenue was pretty much in line with Q2 of 2020. And net gaming revenue came in again at a $2.4 million loss because a lot of that initial upfront spend and promotional activity. So to close things out here, you guys, I definitely think the SCORE is worth keeping on your watch list. For me, it's still not a buy yet, just because the valuation in terms of market cap does seem a little bit rich for some of the revenue numbers that they're putting up. Despite their massive quarterly and year over year growth in the sports betting division, I think this is gonna be a very competitive space. There's a lot of huge players already established in this industry, and I think it's gonna cost a lot of money for the score to build up their platform and to bring these people over to their app versus some of the other alternatives. Now that being said, if and when this bill in Canada does go through, I think that's going to be a major catalyst for the score. And I think they're actually set up to be the number one app or number one betting platform here in Canada. Now, the problem for me is we don't know when that bill's actually going to get passed. And a lot of these companies that are showing very little revenue and quarterly and yearly losses are getting really beaten up in this current market environment. So for me personally, I think my money is in a better, safer spot with some of my other investments with less downside or potential risk to my actual principal investment. However, with all that said, I definitely think the score is in a very good spot in terms of their future growth profile. I think if they're able to remain liquid and able to continue to expand and grab market share, both south of the border through the introduction of their platform in new states, and if this bill goes through relatively quickly here in Canada, this could be a very exciting stock to be in and offer a huge return on your investment. Now for any of you who actually own the score currently, I would definitely recommend holding on to your shares. I think we are starting to bottom out in this company. Maybe we get into the eight, nine, $10 range, but I think we are starting to kind of hit that support level. And it's really now just gonna be a waiting game to see how some of this legislation unfolds over the next months and potentially years. Now, before I let you go, please make sure you smash that like button, you guys. It really does help myself and the channel out in a big way. If you're not already subscribed to McNally Money, please feel free to do so. And on a final note, leave a comment in the section below on what you personally think of the score, their betting platform, their future growth prospects, and if you currently hold shares. And on a final note, you guys, make sure you have a great rest of your day, and thanks so much for watching.